ಸಂಪನ್ನ ಪಾರಿ ಜಾತ ಯೋತ್ರೈಕ ಪಾಣೇನ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಮುದ್ರಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೀತಾಮೃತುಹೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ವೆಂಕಟೇಶ ಮೈ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ವಿಶಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪರಿಪೂರ್ಣ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದ ಟು ಆಲ್ ದ ವೀವರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವೆಂಕಟೇಶ್ವರ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಚಾನಲ್ ಮೇ ದಲ್ ಮೈಟಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ವೆಂಕಟೇಶ್ವರ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಪರಿಟಿ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಥರ್ನಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಪರಿಪೂರ್ಣ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಕಟಾಕ್ಷಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ಯು ಅಂಡ್ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಮೆಂಬರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ Uh, let us begin bhagavad gita today we are going to have the summary of seventh chapter because we had completed in the last episode this chapter the name of the chapter as we saw gnana vignana yoga yoga means chapter gnana and vignana both means knowledge the knowledge of two reality of the ishvara now bhagavad gita contains 18 chapters these 18 chapters can be divided into three shatkams according to the content of those every shatkam shatkam means a uh, part which contains or which consists six chapters we saw the first six chapter it deals about individual nature and consciousness means individual reality and the second we call it madhyama shatkam in sanskrit we say prathama shatkam madhyama shatkam charama shatkam madhyama shatkam means a middle portion this sixth chapter i mean from 7 to 12 it deals with god concept so like uh, in step by step way if we see first three chapter it talks about jeeva swarupaha then jeeva swarupa means the nature of every individual consciousness or individual beings that uh, can be human being or animals or plants so so many varieties of beings are there in our planet earth and beyond our reach even so all those being what kind of nature they do have jeeva swarupa then the karma yoga because jeeva swarupa he is involved with karma without karma we are not able to understand ourselves because understanding itself it's a karma when we wake up then alone we become aware about our nature therefore what whole day we are endowed with karma whether we like or not we make decision or not we are endowed with karma nobody can pluck karma out of us because jiva is completely one with karma that's what the connection of this body and the world see my karma connects with my body and this world my body is connected also with the world because of what because of my own karma see everything begins from my action therefore the entire karma theory was discussed in the first six chapter then finally we saw you know uh, jiva swarupa karma yoga then we finally reached to the core of the jiva the third one is purusha prayatnam this purusha prayatnam is known as a human effort so when we come to know about ourselves then we have to elevate ourselves that's what we saw in the sixth chapter after completing five chapters one should make effort to elevate himself to be a celestial being because when we are born we were not even human being therefore we grew to be a human being and we have to grow to be a celestial being what i mean consumer to contribute that's what the life is understanding about one's own self will help to convert himself from the consumer standpoint to the contributor stand that's what we saw means jeeva swarupa 
karma yoga purusha prayatna and the second sixth chapter talks about ishvara swarupa it also contains a three uh, realities ishvara swarupa then ishvara upasana which is known as bhakti then ishvara anugraha anugraha means grace of ishvara ishvara swarupa means what we call it uh, the nature of ishvara the glory of ishvara the function of the ishvara that's what ishvara swarupam is bhakti means what i clearly mentioned it uh, is a kind of transaction so it begins with a normal transaction to non transaction it ends with non transaction so transaction is needed only when you have some need to get something but this transaction begins with the need but it ends with complete satisfaction where there is satisfaction no need of any kind of transaction that's what purna bhakti is that purna bhakti is uh, somehow it is discussed in the 7th chapter so it may be in the beginning stage but he will give elaborate meaning in 12th chapter therefore we need not worry because this chapter contains all uh, concept of god not only that so how we have to uh, start or begin with the research or inquiry of the god then finally it gave anugraham anugraham means ishvara kripa this ishvara kripa means what because we live with our own effort that's what we think isn't it but without anugraha grace of ishvara nobody can have even a fraction of second in our life so understanding this becomes ishvara anugraham these three topics are going to be dealt with bhagavan krishna in the beginning itself he assured in the first three verses see 1 2 3 he gave a kind of introduction about the content of seventh chapter in the first verse he talked about the requirement of a student of the seventh chapter he says so one should have a surrendering attitude and he should be very clear with the goal that's what you know mad ashrayaha having surrendered to me mai asakta manaha with a mind which is committed with a desire to the goal proper goal goal means what ishvara is the goal then i will teach him completely about me he gives the assurance in the beginning words of itself what does he mean that's what he gives in the second shloka in the second shloka he gives two kinds of uh, words gnanam vigyanam that's what the title of this chapter the god concept can be divided into two aspects lower aspects and higher aspects this lower aspects known as gnanam higher aspects known as vigyanam means uh, complete knowledge of the god by knowing which you need not to know anything afterwards after that so once you realize the god so you become sarvajna in the upanishad there is uh, one sentence knowing which everything becomes as well as known so knowing the god usually you know when we discuss about god we may have the doubt you know realization god is not a necessary right now because uh, if you are young young means what i mean to say in 20s or 25 or 30s so at that time you know we don't have that much uh, shraddha or interest into god concept because at that time you are engaged with so many 
interesting things around the world once you are kicked off some problems issues then you will start feeling something is wrong with the world that's how the inquiry begins something is wrong with the world then that understanding it turns towards you something is wrong with me maybe may not be um, then you come across six chapter of gita then you will realize yes so my perception has to be changed i have to realize myself completely then i have to realize about the world so world cannot be realized without realizing the god therefore god concept is very important that's what people say so when you become aware about there is one ultimate goal then your life is settled that's what many people are not aware so the necessity of realization about god is very much preliminary very important thing in our life that has to be sought first then how we can live life with the process of understanding ishvara that's how life is being established in ancient time now there is no environment every media and every content which is dealt with in the schools colleges and universities they help you to uh, go towards outside not turn towards in that's what the problem is therefore he says one can get complete satisfaction afterwards he doesn't require for his satisfaction that searching for satisfaction is the life then he in the third words he gives a jnana stuti the glory of knowledge is spoken because manushyanam sagasreshu kaschit etate siddhaye etatam api siddhanam kaschin mam veti tatvatah oh one among the thousands of crores of people alone just can understand oh problem is not outside problem is inside because whenever i say this you might be aware when you are surrendered by the problems so you feel you are alone that loneliness will be experienced so nobody can help because even your physical pain has to be enjoyed or experienced by only you nobody can help your hunger your thirst and your every feeling only belongs to you if the problem is felt or experienced the remedy to be uh, received by you alone nobody can do anything about it therefore we have to make effort because this knowledge is, is very rare though this knowledge is available in the lots of book shop but it cannot be assimilated therefore bhagavan krishna says be careful so this journey you know this journey is known as unknown to known or known to unknown this life is you know unknown to known because we are not aware where are we from purposely so everything is veiled your previous birth is not known to you because what it is veiled if you have the memory of the last birth how the life it would be do you have every feelings every emotions in the subtle form you don't know why you get so so much anger i have seen you know from the childhood some of them are very rational anger aggressive some of them are very calm some of them are interested in eating habits some of them is interested in the sports some of them is interested in some other activities so this is the continuity from the last birth isn't it so in that way you could feel there are certain emotions from the childhood like a fear 
are becoming tensed. So your nature is constructed because of the result of past birth, isn't it? If you have the memory, uh, you could rea realize where you were, with who uh, you lived, how it would be. It would be chaos. Then you will uh, start constructing a bridge. You will be having, you know, so your children's over there. Now you have become child for some other parents. It will be, you know, confusing chaos. So something is maintaining your system. So you are kept ignorant to past. That's for good, not for bad. So that's good because you can sleep well if you have the memory of the past birth. So all revenge, avenge and good, bad memories, oh my God, psychologically you will become sick, you cannot even grow. Your physical system will be collapsed in the young age itself. You won't be born as a baby, you will be born as a, uh, what is the disease or um, sick. That's what I can say. Therefore, something is maintaining us. Or if you think that th this birth is the beginning birth means, uh, so for what? You are unknown to destiny. Therefore, I said life is nothing but the journey unknown to known, known to unknown. So now you are known for some, you know, some level of understanding. So certain level of understanding. Okay. Therefore, you can have a kind of relative secure life, but now you have to realize what is going on, where all going to end. So once you are thinking in this way, you will be able to think about your destination. This destination must be selected. That destination is nothing but God. Now, only in our religion, God and destination both are same. That is the wonder Krishna introduces here. Okay, so one among the crowds of people make effort because this knowledge is very rare. So you are that person. So you are very rare. Somehow you are getting interest in the Bhagavad Gita. Don't live in between. Keep going. Then he begins from fourth words onwards up to twelfth words. He talks about Ishvara Swarupam. This fourth words he begins like the Apara Prakriti. He introduces two kinds of reality. Okay, from here the journey begins. Journey means the realization of the God because. So, if you want to find the God, for example, I had this incident in my life. Once I was traveling uh, Chennai to Delhi to go to Rishikesh, I was sitting in the train and uh, so many children were there in that coach. And it was uh, crossing Andhra, I suppose. One young boy, he went to his father and asked, Dad, where is heaven? Then he said, uh, uh, heaven is uh, above, because uh, daddy was uh, uh, reading a newspaper, you know. So, you have to be aware, this newspaper, don't read your newspaper in the morning itself. Don't get your system corrupted. You can read after 10 o'clock, even after noon. Morning, you should spend your life with a prayer because in our course we were not allowed to read any newspaper other than the subject matter about Upanishad Bhagavad Gita only because you have the responsibility about your system your system should not be corrupted so this all the informations about the world it it goes in wrong way it affects you but this man, you know, who was uh, reading newspaper, it was like a uh, morning 7.30, I suppose. Just, you know, so you, you should have seen people when they read newspaper, as though they are doing 
very precious job, like very serious. And he was reading newspaper. The boy came and he asked, Dad, is there God? Then he said, Hmm, yes. And he went to play. He was playing for 10 minutes and came back and asked, Dad, where is he? Who? The God. He is the even. He went and he came again. Uh, where is heaven, Dad? Then, you know, he looked, stirred at him, shut up, go and play. That's all. He shut his mouth up. But that boy, he will be thinking if he has got some punyapala, otherwise he will be anesthetized locally. The same shutting up mouth will continue for the generations. We are not welcoming the inquiry of the God, therefore we have to encourage it. So we have to encourage it means first we have to keep involving in that. So when you want to know about God, you have to analyze about the world because God is unknown but the created world is very much available therefore we will have the journey with known to unknown now known means what the created world therefore Bhagavan Krishna gives the first reality of the God is the world the world means what that's what he gives in the verse number four he gave a name for that apara prakriti we saw in very detailed way so you can check with your notes in the next verse itself he introduced one more reality called para prakriti now he says this both alone khas means jagat karanam both together causes for the creation said in the verse number six so in this two verses, he says, this both reality, Paraprakriti and Aparaprakriti alone, causes for entire creations and he Bhagavan says this para prakriti alone becomes base for apara prakriti so apara prakriti comes into manifestation and goes into unmanifestation and this uh, sustenation also is taken care of uh, Ishvara alone he gives a kind of sutra sutra means uh, it's a kind of uh, short version in these two verses Bhagavan has got two reality para prakriti and apara prakriti apara prakriti means which is visible can be experienced also we also can enjoy it but para prakriti which is beyond our reach but which is nothing but the khas so in these two verses so we had long discussion so lots of things, so those things we will see in brief way in the next session. Then we will continue this summary because the seventh chapter is the main chapter in the Bhagavad Gita, whole 18 chapters. Therefore, so when we discuss about the summary of seventh chapter, you have to be very consciousness and awareful because there are so many points so that those points they deal with unknown factors which is the cause and one more thing the Ishvara is not far beyond you so he is very much in you in the form of you that's what the reality is therefore what it becomes duty of us to realize or to be aware now we think only we live only i am in me but the reality is so you are there in you but one more source is also there in you alone that is nothing but ishwaratvam 
that Ishwara exists in you. That becomes your mistake if you are not becoming aware about it. That's what Bhagavan Krishna indicates. Don't commit this mistake. Just be realized on. Then you see the life becomes heaven. So there he begins. We will continue from the next episode. Harihi Om. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamivavashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om